Welcome to Marine Gurukul video series. This volume one on tides is intended to lay a foundation to understand tides, their causes, and the layout of the Admiralty tide tables. This volume one video is intended to lay a good foundation for the subsequent volumes wherein we shall learn about tidal calculations. We know that nearly 75% of the Earth's surface is covered by water, that is, com it comprises of seas and oceans. Now, Earth, when surrounded by water, under normal circumstances, you would not expect the level of the water changing with time. That means, depth at a given place under normal circumstances would be expected to remain unchanged. However, we also know that Earth has two celestial bodies in its close proximity, the Moon and the Sun. Because of their close, close proximity to the Earth, they exert gravitational pull on Earth. And this gravitational pull, which is exerted as per Newton's law of gravitation, is directly proportional to the mass of the two bodies involved and inversely proportional to the square of distance between them. Earth being much closer to moon than sun experiences higher gravitational pull of the moon despite moon's smaller mass because gravitational pull is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the bodies. The gravitational attraction of the moon causes the oceans to bulge out in the direction of the moon and in the opposite direction, that is the far side, though the bulging in the opposite direction is of slightly lesser extent. We can see this in the diagram that's coming up. This is the Earth. We have the Moon. The Moon exerts gravitational pull on the Earth. This causes the bulging of the water in the direction of the Moon and in the opposite direction. Why? Because the water here is pulled towards the Moon. So what do we experience? That the level in this part has become higher and so is the level in this part also though to a slightly lesser extent. So this bulging on higher bulging in the direction of the moon, we call it as high, high water. And in this one in the opposite direction is called as low, high water. We also know that Earth rotates from west to east. So as the Earth rotates, different points on the surface of the Earth shall be passing these areas of high water and also these areas in the perpendicular direction, the areas of low water. And accordingly, these places shall experience the change in the level of the, in the level of the water bodies. And this is going to be periodic. Why? Because the earth rotates at a uniform rate. And therefore, we have these two as the areas of high water and in the perpendicular direction to the direction of the moon, we have the areas of low water. And since the earth rotates at a uniform rate, therefore the places experiences experience periodic rise and fall of water level in the large water bodies. Now, why there is bulging in the opposite direction is very simple to understand. We can divide this entire mass into three components. One is the mass of the water on the side of the moon. Second is the mass of this uh, solid part of the earth and the mass of the water in the opposite direction of the to the moon. Now this water being closer to the moon will experience maximum gravitational pull. Some slightly lesser extent than this would be experienced by earth because the center of the earth is at a slightly greater distance. So that means this water will be pulled more towards the moon compared to what earth is being pulled and hence this bulging gets justified. This water body on the opposite side has, is even at a greater distance than the center of the earth and therefore this shall experience relatively lesser or the minimum pull. So now earth solid mass experiencing greater gravitational pull, this water mass experiencing lesser gravitational pull Earth gets slightly more displaced towards the moon, pulled more towards the moon, causing a bulge in on the far side as well. So it is the different magnitudes of the gravitational pull 
on the water body towards the moon and water body on the far side and the solid mass of the earth which is which is the cause for high water on the side of the moon as well as on the opposite or the far side this periodic rise and fall in level of water bodies large water bodies is what we call as tide though moon's gravitational pull is the main cause of tides as just discussed the sun's gravitational pull cannot be completely ignored and does have a modifying effect on the tides accordingly the height of tide shall depend upon the resultant gravitational pull experienced by the earth that is the resultant of the moon's gravitational pull on earth and the sun's gravitational pull on the earth the resultant of these two gravitational pull shall depend upon how sun and moon are oriented in the space with respect to the earth that means it shall depend upon the angle subtended by the centers of the sun and moon at the center of the earth and what we have learnt in navigation and termed in navigation as the elongation of the moon the tide heights are maximum when sun and moon are in a straight line aligned in a straight line that means the gravitational pulls are along a straight line whether they are on the same side of the earth or they are on opposite sides of the earth that means this will happen when the elongation of the moon is either 0 degrees that means moon is in conjunction with the sun and that is occurrence we all know is the occurrence of new moon or the elongation of the moon becomes 180 degrees that means moon is at opposition that is the event or occurrence of full moon this tide when the gravitational pulls of both the bodies are aligned in a straight line this tide height which is maximum is called as the spring tide the tide heights being minimum when the gravitational pull of the sun and the moon act perpendicular to each other this is when the elongation of the moon is either 90 degrees east or 90 degrees west that is the moon is at quarters the first quarter or the third quarter this tide is referred to as neap tide let's uh, reinforce the concept of spring and neap tide through this diagram we have the sun we have the earth sun's rays travel in straight line as can be seen in the diagram moon revolves around the earth in its orbit so we have the orbit of the moon when the moon is at this place it is in conjunction with the sun the entire illuminated face of the moon is facing away from the earth so no moon shall be visible on the earth and hence the condition for new moon so here we have the moon in conjunction it's new moon and obviously it's a condition for spring tide because moon and sun are in a straight line as seen from the earth then moon revolves around the earth in its orbit reaches this place where now the angle subtended at the center of the earth by sun and moon is 90 degrees and you have the condition of quadrature only quarter moon will be visible from the earth why because this is the illuminated face only this much part will be visible from the earth that means one fourth of the total moon surface and it's a condition for neap tide then moon reaches in opposition entire illuminated face is towards the earth we have the con condition for new uh, full moon and it's again a condition for spring tide why because the earth from the earth the sun and moon are in a straight line though they are on opposite directions so opposition full moon spring tide moon revolves further which is here it's again in quadrature it's quarter moon that is visible and its condition for neap tide so whatever we discussed a while back can all be remembered and explained through this particular diagram oxygen spring tide is a rare unusually high tide so it's obviously a type of spring tide but in a special condition 
This very high tide occurs when moon is both unusually close to the earth. That means moon is at uh, perigee or it's also called as proxy. So when moon is closest to the earth, it's called said to be at perigee or proxy. And in the new moon phase, when the moon is between the sun and the earth, the tide that occurs in this condition is called as the proxygen spring tide. This proxygen spring tide occurs at almost every one and a half years. And we can see this in this diagram. We have the sun here. We have the sun's rays. We have the earth. We have the orbit of the moon around the earth. The moon is here in conjunction that is new moon phase and also at perigee that means closest to the earth and this will be the condition for oxygen spring tide moon is at perigee closest to the earth in conjunction new moon and all these are the conditions for oxygen spring tide which is a rare unusually high tide now let's uh, familiarize ourselves with some of the terms in context to tides because we shall be using them in our learning and discussion lat lowest astronomical tide lat is the lowest level that can be expected to occur under average meteorological conditions and under any combination of astronomical conditions lat is used as chart datum you can see in this diagram here this level is the lat level and is also the chart datum we'll see it uh, in a bigger diagram in a while lat is not the extreme lowest level certain exceptional meteorological conditions may cause the level to go below lat the level under these circumstances is referred to as negative surge lat is determined by inspecting predicted sea levels over a period of 18.6 year cycle our datum is the reference water level from where the depths displayed on a nautical chart are measured height of tide is measured and the drying heights are measured you can see in this diagram here we have the chart datum which is same as lat from where the depth of the seabed is measured and is the charted depth where the height of tide up to the current water level is measured and so are the drying heights we shall learn little more about these in a while from now a chart datum is generally derived from some phase of the tide common chart datums are lowest astronomical tide that is lat and mean lower low water mean lower low water in non tidal areas like baltic sea mean sea level is used as the chart datum in the absence of tides a chart datum is a vertical datum so the measurements with respect to chart datum are done in the vertical plane let's depict these few terms that we have learned onto this diagram this is the current sea level uh, so where this is the sea surface and obviously the depth of the seabed below the surface at any point at that time shall be the observed depth at that point then this represents the chart datum which we have said usually is the lat else it could also be mean lower low water mllw in the absence of tides it could be the mean sea level now from the chart datum what we measure are the charted depths so the depth of the seabed below this chart datum is the charted depth you can see it here and the height of the sea surface above the chart datum is the tide height of tide at that particular point of time drying heights there could be some rocks seabed features which may cover and uncover during rise and fall of tide the height of such seabed features or rocks above the chart datum so the reference is the chart datum so above the chart datum 
is known as the drying height. You can see in this diagram, we shall see it in a bigger diagram in a while from now. It is the vertical distance of the seabed that is exposed by tide above the sea water level at the lowest astronomical tide or above the chart datum. On admiralty charts, a drying height is distinguished from depth. So it is marked like depth in meters and decimeters, but it is distinguished from depth by being underlined. As you can see here, this 2.8 meters for Conning Big Rock, which is underlined here, is not the depth of depth out here at Conning Big Rock. In fact, this is the drying height of the Conning Big Rock. So drying height of the Conning Big Rock is 2.8 meters. Let's continue with this diagram wherein we had already marked some levels and terms which we had learned earlier. And on the same diagram, now we shall insert the drying height. So this level of the chart datum or the LAT is also the charted low water line. This feature of the seabed is covered and uncovered because of rise and fall of tide. So the height of this feature above the chart, the chart datum is what is its drying height. Mean high water spring and mean low water spring. The height of mean high water spring is the average throughout the year of two successive high waters during those periods of 24 hours when the range of the tide is at its greatest. That means when you have spring tide, the height of the two successive high waters is taken for a period of 24 hours. And this is averaged for the full year. And that what is what gives us mean high water spring. You can see in this diagram, here is the mean high water spring level. Likewise, the height of mean low water spring is the average height obtained by the two successive low waters during those 24 hours when the range of the tide is at its greatest. So for both the range is greatest. In one case, you take the height of the high water. In the other case, you take the height of the low water. In this diagram, here is mean low water spring. We shall see all this in the bigger diagram. We shall ins insert this in the diagram that we are continuing with. The difference in the height of mean high water spring and mean low water spring is what is called as the spring range of tide. Mean high water spring is the charted high water level and taken as chart datum for reference for charted height or elevation of objects which do not submerge in water like the lighthouses. So this mean high water spring level is also the charted high water level as far as charts are concerned. And the height of the objects which do not submerge in water like lighthouse, they are measured with respect to this charted high water level, which is same as the mean high water spring. Height of mean high water spring and mean low water spring above chart datum is available both in the tide table, so it can be obtained from tide tables, as well as it can also be obtained from a table of tides, which is contained on the navigational charts. Let's insert these uh, couple of terms we have just done in the same diagram that we are continuing with. Here is mean low water spring level. Here we have inserted is the mean high water spring level. Obviously, the height difference between the two is the spring range of tide. Mean high water spring also acts as the charted high water level from where the height of objects which do not get submerged like lighthouse they are measured. So charted height and ele or elevations are measured with respect to mean high water spring. Mean high water neaps and mean low water neaps they are defined exactly the same way as mean high and low water springs, excepting that instead of measuring them at the spring tide, these are measured at the neap tide. The height of mean high water neap, the average throughout the year 
of two successive high waters during those periods of 24 hours when the range of tide is at its least. You can see in this diagram, this level represents the mean high water neaps. Likewise, the height of the mean low water neaps is the average height obtained by two successive low waters during those periods of 24 hours when the range of tide is at its least. And this level in the diagram represents mean low water neap. Difference in the height between these two represents the neap range of tide. And the height of mean high water neap or mean low water neap can be obtained either from tide tables or from the table of levels given on the navigational chart. Now we insert uh, mean high water neaps and mean low water neaps in this diagram. Here is mean low water neaps level. This is mean high water neaps level. This represents then the neap range of tide. You can see here very clearly that the neap range is much lesser than the spring range. Mean sea level is the average level of the sea surface over a long period, normally 18.6 years, or the average level which would exist in the absence of tides. Now to work out this MSL, uh, observations are made at the tidal stations. Average height of the surface of the sea at tide station is determined from hourly readings. And these hourly readings are then taken into account to work out the MSL. The hourly level, uh, sea level readings are taken with respect to a predetermined reference, usually the chart datum. You can see MSL inserted in this diagram here. We shall insert in the bigger diagram the way we have done for all other terms. This is also the datum for the reference of all land surveys. So for all land surveys, this mean sea level is the reference. So it is the land survey datum as well. If you remember those yellow boards at any of the railway stations, big boards when at the beginning and end of the platform station, under the name of the railway station, you'll find height above sea level for that particular station. And that height above sea level is with respect to MSL or the mean sea level. Let's uh, insert MSL into this diagram. So here is the mean sea level in this diagram. Other terms we have already covered. Now this MSL is also the datum for land survey. So you can see it, MSL being the datum for the land survey as well. HAT, highest astronomical tide. We started our discussion with LAT. Now we have come to its counterpart, the HAT. HAT is the highest level that can be expected to occur under average meteorological conditions and under any combination of astronomical conditions. You can see in this diagram, HAT level having been inserted, we'll see it in our bigger diagram and shall insert it there as well. HAT is taken as the datum reference for charted vertical clearances of bridges and overhead power cables. Now, please do not get confused between clearances and heights. For heights, the reference charted heights, the reference is mean high water spring. For clearances, for vertical clearances, the reference is the HAT. So here we have case of a bridge and overhead cable where we are talking of these clearances we shall insert them in our diagram height of hat above chart datum can be obtained from tide tables as well as it's also documented in the table of levels on the chart hat is not the extreme highest level under certain exceptional meteorological conditions the levels may go higher than the hat in that scenario it is referred to as storm surge in case of lat it was a negative surge in case of hat it will be a storm surge hat are determined by inspecting predicted sea levels 
over a period of 18.6 year cycle. So now let's uh, insert uh, HAT, highest astronomical level in this diagram. So here is the HAT, which becomes the reference for vertical clearances. So here we have the bridge. So this shall be the charted vertical clearance. So the, on the chart, vertical clearances are charted, then they should be, shall be with respect to HAT, highest astronomical tide. Likewise, we have the power cable here. So this height would be the physical vertical clearance. Now, as far as power cables are concerned, depending on the voltage of the power cable, the vessels may require some additional clearance, may not be just uh, be interested in the physical vertical clearance. There may be some requirement of additional clearance because of the uh, current or the voltage that the cable carries. In that case, we could have another term called a safe vertical clearance. So you can see HAT is used for measuring the vertical clearances. Now, please have a good look at this diagram. We started from the chart datum. We came right up to HAT and this entire diagram has been covered during our discussion with each and every term coming under discussion and having been explained. Now we come to tide tables. Well, uh, different countries have their own hydrographic departments publishing their own tide tables. What we shall be discussing are the admiralty tide tables as they are the ones that are used in our examination. Now these admiralty tide tables contain easy to use height timing and tidal stream information to support the planning of departure and arrival times. Each volume of the tide tables referred to as ATT Admiralty tide tables includes daily high and low water times and heights for standard ports, time and height differences for the secondary ports, harmonic constants for all ports where they are known, methods of prediction and information about the effects of meteorological conditions on tides and additional information on exceptional factors provided for each area. The ports in the ATT are grouped as standard ports and secondary ports. Standard ports are the ones for which daily tables of predicted times and height of high and low waters are provided in the tide tables. All times in these tables are in the local standard time. Predicted heights are in meters and are based on chart datum or LAT. Secondary ports on the other hand are those places or ports for which the daily predictions are not provided in the tide tables. Data required for calculating times and heights of tides at these places, that is the second reports, is given in the tide tables after the standard port predictions. Secondary ports are grouped under standard ports with similar tidal patterns. So for each secondary port, there shall be a corresponding uh, standard port, which, is, well, which has nothing to do with the proximity, distance, country, or the geography. It has only got to do with the similarity of the tidal pattern. ATT comprises of uh, nine volumes, each volume co covering a different geographical area. And this diagram here gives us the limits of admiralty tide tables. Total nine of them numbered from one to eight. Volume one being split into one alpha and one bravo, thus making it a total of nine volumes. Now, the tide table for MMD exam that is used is titled Selected Pages from Admiralty Tide Tables, Volume 1, 2, and 3, 1992, all consolidated in a book to be used for exam. The cover page of that book for examination looks like this, as you can see on your screen. Now, what we shall do is we shall quickly familiarize ourselves with the pages of 
this uh, tight table which is used in the exam uh, that detailed uh, usage of each part we shall learn as we use them in our subsequent volumes so the layout of the att is you have a cover page which looks like this as on the screen then on the inside of this cover page itself you have index of standard ports as you can see in this one then we have this area and time zone diagram and the miscellaneous information which includes preface as well as instructions for use of tables the preface page starts something like this as you can see followed by this are the supplementary tables a set of tables to convert units giving some arguments for some areas so these are some supplementary tables there are series of tables which are contained then we come to part one of the table so part one of the table contains daily predictions for times and heights of high and low water at standard ports now this part one page of any standard port for european water volume that is volume one shall look somewhat like this the left page carrying this interpolation diagram right page containing the daily predictions of times and heights of high and low water so for each standard port there shall be enough information covering the entire year uh, so we can pick up for any date of that particular year the time and heights of high and low water now if you use any other volume than the european ports then this part one page will only look like this it will not have that interpolation curve tidal curve which was there in the european port because in european ports the tidal curve is port specific in the other volumes it is the generic curve which we shall learn when it comes to tidal calculations then we have part two wherein we get data for the prediction at large number of secondary ports this is in the form of time and height differences referred to one of the standard ports in part one and page for part two would look like this then we shall have part three part three shall give us information regarding harmonic constants for use with simplified harmonic method of tidal prediction a typical page three part three page could be looking like this and at the end of the tables we have the geographical index for each volume and in the geographical index all the ports in that particular volume that are contained in that particular tight table are alphabetically organized so we can it is easy to enter because of the alphabetical order in which the ports are listed out there the detailed usage of the tables be it part one part two or the interpolation curves we shall learn when we launch in ourselves into tidal calculations in the subsequent videos uh, i hope this uh, video volume one on tides would have laid the required foundation and with this foundation in place we it shall be easy for us to launch into tidal calculations please do look out for our next video if you like uh, our effort please do subscribe to our channel so that you can keep getting automatic notifications in future for new releases and if you have any feedback please do write to us on marinegurukul at gmail.com Thank you very much for watching Marine Gurukul video series.